Can you record? Okay. Not funny, but funny. Um, I did a post in my connection builder, so Marissa, you might've seen it. And then I did it on my page because I was like super proud. I love sales. I love being able to, um, you know, have someone give me an objection and turn it around, which I did. And then I posted in a couple places like coach quiz, you know, when somebody does their own research and they come back at you and they say like, Oh, I found three cheaper ways to enroll. What's your response? <laughs> well, I sent that to her instead of the link that she asked for. And cause I did a quick copy and paste. And so it's happened to me a couple times where I hit copy and the link doesn't copy, but I hit paste way too quickly or I hit send. And I was like, Oh my God, I just, okay, that sucks. And I was like, Hey, I'm like, <laughs> clearly that wasn't meant for you. And I was like, I actually lead a training. And so this was like a really good teaching moment. And then I was like, fuck, I totally screwed that. And then I did give her a voice message and I was like, you know, I'm actually super embarrassed that I sent that to you, but this is a teaching moment. I'm huge on education. You came at me with, you know, saying like, well, I found other options and I wanted to educate you and I teach other people to do the same, whatever. Um, I don't know that that really was the reason that she ultimately didn't join, but I don't think it helped. <laughs> Because after like she gave me her three options, I mean, basically what I said was, that's cool. I'm at a place in my business where if you want to do a three month, a free trial, you're not going to have my form checks. You're not going to have my fit family. Like that's part of the package and I'm here to help you regardless. And I might change that. And as a new coach, I brought in everyone, whether you were a free transfer, I didn't care. I wanted to help everybody. But at this time, I want to work with people that want to go all in and having that firm, like whatever boundary is working for me, getting the right people. Um, but yeah, she asked for the full enrollment and then I sent that and she didn't actually enroll, but it is what it is. And you know what? It still was a great conversation starter for other trainings. And I'm just like, whatever I'm, you can't say the right thing to the wrong person and the whatever. Did she respond to you when you said that? She responded because I was like, you know, I, I wrote her again the next day and I was like, you know, I, I just want to see, you know, is this something that you want to move forward with? The group is open, super excited. Everything that I've shared with you, I was not blowing smoke up your ass. Like I stand firm on everything that I've shared with you. And she's like, well, can I pay in installments? Can I do something different? Blah, blah, blah. Like she's a gym goer and she just doesn't trust it. And I'm okay with that. Like, I'm not here to convince you. Like, and I said, you know, I saw that you're in the system. So is it that you don't trust Beachbody? Like, is there something that, you know, I can address? And she's like, oh, I had a friend that wanted me to look at information. I had to sign up before. I think going with a cheaper option is better for me. And I was like, okay, I don't even want her. I'm just like, whatever. I'm just going to let it go. But we all make mistakes. I don't care. I enrolled two other people that day. I don't care. Um, you know, shame on me and I need to check what I paste before I send. <laughs> so whatever. <laughs> well, sometimes you have to learn the hard way. That's all we, all we can say. Yeah. I, like I said, I don't know that that was really the defining, deciding factor. She was like wanting to go cheap anyway. And I just think she doesn't trust the system. I don't think she feels that she needs it. And I'm okay with that because it works for me. Whatever. Do you boo. Well, um, may I ask you, since you've changed it over to only letting people that enroll with the package into your group, what has that done for your, like, how has it improved your group? I'd like to know. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going back and forth with what I want to do with the groups. Um, I'm actually changing it again that I'm only going to give form checks to people in my program select. I spend a lot of time on those form checks and I used to post them all in my general fit family. And it's like, I'm thinking of opening up a business about form checks. So you know what? I'm worth more. And so that's going to be just for my program select. And I might allow just anybody to come into the general fit family right now. I have guidelines and I go back and forth because I don't want to work with wallflowers. I literally just had somebody reach out to me and say, I really need your help. I need accountability. I need tracking. I don't know if I want to be back in the fit family though, because if I don't do it and I get kicked out, that's going to like hurt my feelings. And I was like, what the fuck? What do you think an accountability group is? Um, 
So I'm thinking of letting other people in, but I really want serious people and I just don't, and I know that that doesn't mean that they're not serious. I have actually people that I'll say, um, you can enroll with a three month membership. I'm here to support you and be your coach. It's just my fit family is with the full package. And I have somebody right now who's doing great. Um, I have somebody who started that way. And after like a couple weeks, she wanted to upgrade and have the fit family. Um, the person that I just checked in with yesterday, she's like, I'm doing great. I really love these programs. I'm like, that's what I tried to tell you. They're awesome. She's like, I'm just really stubborn. I'm like, yep, so am I, you know, but that's, that's just where I'm at right now. I, I know what I give to my fit families and I set a higher bar for those I want to work with at this time. May I ask you, are you supporting these people that are like enrolling with a three month package, like outside the fit family? Are you texting them? Like, how are you supporting them? Yeah, they're in my connection builder. So I'll reach out to them like okay. weekly, you know, every couple of weeks. Um, yeah, and just that's a lot of work too, though, to do that. Yeah, but it puts more work on them. Like, are you serious? Are you doing this? Okay. Um, I mean, it's just a quick text. I don't really care. Yeah. I mean, I'm just asking, I'm just asking, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not judging your way of doing it. I'm honestly just curious. Like I'm, yeah, no, I, I'm for not, me, I don't, I don't feel that you should get everything when you're like, I'm just going to test something out. I just, that's my choice. I'm not, as a new coach, I wouldn't have done that, but where I'm at now, that's my choice. And I just want to work with people that believe in everything that I'm sharing because I do a lot of work behind the scenes and I'm proud of it and I don't want to just give it away. Well, maybe here's, here's something that I'm like, I'm hearing you say that could be like a teaching point. It seems like your people that are just enrolling with like a three month membership or a free bod membership or whatever, your text, you're more doing a personal check-in, like you're personalizing it to them and you're not putting them in a group setting. So they're actually getting your support one-on-one, -on -one, which might be encouraging them because you're still supporting them and you're giving them that one-on-one, -on -one, you're building that relationship with them. And that might be like what's leading them to want to do your fit fam. Like, so I don't, I'm not making anything you're doing wrong. I'm literally trying to like pick people's brain to figure out like what works to retain, what works to get somebody enrolled and what works to retain them like long term. Because obviously there's, there's actually a thread in the round table right now. Like there's been threads for years, ever since they moved over to VOD, just so you guys know. Um, when they switched over to BOD, the way it used to be with Beachbody is every time they would launch a new workout program, so say like Morning Meltdown was coming out, everyone would have to invest $120, $140 in the new program and they would get a physical program with the booklet, with the DVDs, there wasn't Beachbody on demand back then. So every time we had a pro program launch, our volume would explode because imagine it's not just me buying the program but then it's all of my coaches so all of you guys buying the program and then all of your customers who are interested in buying the program right so our volume would spike so high and then it would never drop down as low as it did before so it would go like it would spike and then it would drop a little bit and it would stay there and you have a new like level of income that you were accustomed to I'm talking about volume not commissions okay I'm talking about team volume when you build a big team so it would spike, it would fall, but it would never fall as low as it did. It would never dip as low. So eventually, like I was like, holy crap, like I'm, you know, making $2,500 a week. Like, this is insane. <laughs> like, how, how is this happening? And it was just volume, right? All right, so they switched over to Beachbody On Demand. They stopped doing the program launches, which now they're doing the program launches again where you can do the digital online. So that is helping us with the volume. But they still, when they switched over to BOD, it still is less than what it ever was like that spike in the volume. So there's, so there's a different way of doing, you have to kind of what they're saying in the round table is like, you have to be doing the business differently now than you were back then before bod to have the same amount of income. And so what people are doing, a lot of coaches, there's a thread, like 700 plus comments, huge freaking thread going on right now in the round table about how do we continue to grow our volume um, without it just being challenge pack focused because Beachbody has the whole success club challenge pack. Like that's how you get recognized. Right. But a brand new coach, a lot of times can't get somebody to enroll. They don't have the confidence yet to have someone enroll with the challenge pack. So the conversation that's going on right now is how do we, I feel like I, I put a comment, I'll show you guys the, 
I'll show you guys the thread in the round table. Cause it's like, I, it, I literally spent like an hour and I was like, Oh my God, I'm wasting so much time, but it's important because it's an important conversation that's going on right now. Oh, I'm logged out. Hang on. Well, something that's helped my business, Marissa, is, um, you know, teaming up with another coach that matches my weaknesses. And yeah. that's a point that I have is saying, like, every time I start a new program, if you want to be in that group with the both of us, you have to remain on product. That's what we're doing. People reach out saying, well, how are you getting results? Well, I'm doing all things. And that's really helped my personal business. Um, because people want that support. They want the extra. And I always say investing more in your journey yourself is you're getting more, you're getting two coaches, you're getting form checks each and every day. Like, and it's really helped my business because it's the volume that I'm getting each, like they're staying, they have to stay on product monthly. Okay. So, so what I'm hearing you saying is what's really helped your business is running your challenge group with another coach and who is strong where you're weak. Mm -hmm. So, okay. That's number one guys. So that's a good point. Okay. So we got that. And number two is retention is keeping people on product longer to stay in your group. Okay. So what I, what I was reading and thank you for that. Cause that's, I mean, it's what we talked about last week is like running your group with other people, because if you're running it by yourself and you have one to five of your customers in there, um, then it's going to be difficult to get momentum going. So for a newer coach, it might be better just saying to invite everyone, not just your challenge pack purchases, invite your free BOD members, invite your, you know, people who enroll with just a, a standalone pre-workout energized, because then you're going to have more people in your group and you're, they're going to have a better experience if you're a brand new coach than just your challenge packs. Because maybe you're not enrolling, you know, I don't know how many customer stuffings and rolling with challenge packs every month, but I guarantee it's a lot more than a brand new coach. So in the beginning, you might want to make it like that. You might want to see how that works for you. So here was, here was the discussion in the round table. I'm just sh showing you guys this because I want to have an honest conversation and then I'll go over the business activity tracker. But so can we be, so here's this chick wrote, can we have an honest discussion about volume? Many coaches have expressed concerns about that it's being at a low the last few months. And I'm thankful because Kim, Carver like posted this video about why it's low or whatever. And that always helps to restore confidence and faith. When, but at the end of the day, volume is low and it feels like volume contributes to take a backseat focus to success club and promotions like the $20 off challenge packs next month is an example of this. If you study the comp line, you realize that TV for Shakeology or standalone products is always more than TV on challenge packs. So my point is not to get you guys scared and to have you focusing on volume being low. If you're trying to build a team, my point is to show you it doesn't have to be just challenge packs. Um, it's more about like, you know, volume and retention. That's what it's about. Volume and retention, not challenge packs. Okay. So that TV for Shakeology or standalone products is always more than TV on challenge packs, but discounting it further next month will end up being a real hit for us. When one of your coaches sells three challenge packs at the 130 price and hits success club six, you won't even cycle one time from it, meaning it won't even bring a hundred PV, hundred TV team volume. So would like to know how continuing to lessen team volume would end up helping the already low volume and network lately. Okay, this is not about, um, I'm not talking about, and if you don't understand what team volume is, personal volume is like what you're buying or what you're selling personally. Team volume is what contributes to you cycling when you're an Emerald coach and starting to build that residual income, that long-term business that's gonna allow you to have more freedom to spend time with your families. The business that I have right now that is still there, despite me taking two years of like a back seat, still have a full-time income coming in from each body because of all the work that I put in to build my team not because of sales. Okay. So this is why I am so passionate about the team aspect of it all. Okay. So check this out. Here's a picture of the team volume here. You'll understand promo team volume. So, okay. For a challenge pack, it's the promo team volume is 33, 33 points for team volume, but wait, Okay, so this is taking it down. There was another picture in here that I liked better. This is not the picture that I was trying to send you guys. But essentially, it's, it's just showing you how the team volume works compared to, um, if you're selling, obviously, the bigger packages on the bottom, the team volume is a lot more than what it you know, is going to be if you sell the 150 challenge pack, it's 33 team volume. If you sell the 295, it's 90 team volume. But that's not really what 
I thought was interesting. I think I saved the images. So there's like 714 comments on this post. And okay, see if I can find that other volume thing. It actually just gave me an idea, like to kind of, because like I told you, I'm like trying to decide what I want to do. Somebody that wants to do like a three month membership, I might just say, awesome. Well, if you want access to my fit family, um, all I need you to do is be willing to try a product, whether it's a seven day sampler, whether it's, um, you know, something else that might be something that I start doing. And so, be like, so here's the difference. So if you look at this, this is, this is the volume. This is what I wanted to show you for an ultimate reset dual kit. That's 210. So look here at the, where's the challenge pack on here? So a challenge pack we saw at the 138 price was 38, 33 PV, right? So if someone's paying 130 bucks for a challenge pack, you're getting 38 PV, which is the same as selling two boxes of beach bars or an annual BOD membership or a focused energy. It's the same. So you could sell a challenge pack and get the same team volume as if you're selling these standalone products. So what my what I'm trying to connect here is that it's volume. It's not, you know, it's not what they get. So like a recharge or recover is 40. Do you, I would rather sell um, a recover and get 40 TV than sell a, where was that other um, picture? Then sell a 130 challenge pack and you get 33 TV. You're getting less volume from the challenge pack promo at 130, you're getting 33 TV versus if you sell a recover, you're getting 40. Now my point is not, I'm gonna go out and sell a bunch of recovers because that's what's gonna get me more volume. My point is, is recover more what they need? Okay, so don't try to bundle them into a challenge pack if recover and energize if the performance staff is really what they need. So it's having that honest conversation with people and saying, what is it that you're looking for? Because I have people like, I have this guy who I've been talking to, he hasn't ordered anything from me for like a couple months and he's not, he's not gonna be a beach body workout person. He's like this younger kid that like has a construction job. He is very active during his day, he gets very little sleep and he eats a lot of processed foods like, and he wants to have like healthy options. So we've talked about beach bars, we've talked about um, Energize, like he's not uh, like a beach body on demand, like challenge pack person, but we are still in conversation that he might eventually try the Energize. That's where we're at right now. But my point is that it's what do they need? Are they someone that is really struggling with nutrition and they need healthy snack options? Like that's, maybe they could be a Shakeology plus bars order. That's not a challenge pack, but you know what? That 90 PV of Shakeology, if they have 90 PV on a home direct order, just so you know, that counts as a success club point. So you could sell and let's say share with someone, it counts as two? Okay, so it counts as two. All right, so get me, I'm even wrong. You could share with someone, a performance stack is 90 PV. So someone can enroll with a performance stack alone on HD, it has to be on home direct, and you will get two success club points if that's what they need. My point is to take the focus off challenge packs, okay? And and even and and success club too. If someone is just gonna like I I enrolled several people with just Bod this month because that's what they wanted. And I wasn't gonna force them into doing Shakeology because here's what's gonna happen. If I force them to do a challenge pack, they're not gonna like the Shakeology anyway, because I forced them to buy it, or they're not gonna like the performance line anyway, because I'm the one that said you need this and they didn't really want it. They don't see the value in it. They're gonna to try to mix up their shake a stupid way a couple times, they're gonna hate the way it tastes, and they're never gonna to wanna to drink Shakeology ever again. So what, what's the point of that? I'd rather have them enroll with what they want, enroll with what they need, what's gonna give them the results they want now with the BOD membership, get into my challenge group, see what my community is like, experience me as their coach, have that follow-up, and then they become a lifelong relationship and member of my team. So my point is, if you're talking to someone, you have to have a conversation with them and you need to find their needs. But even like the digestive health, like I've been considering myself personally looking into like more digestive gut health things for myself with Beachbody. And I don't even know what they are because I don't use them. But I'm having some issues and I'd like to see what 
else we offer and try it myself. So now that might be something that I post about and that might be something that is gonna be in my toolbox to get people enrolled with. So like, I hope you're getting here that challenge packs are not the solution for everyone. Um, and, she, and success club is less important than volume, in my opinion. If you're a new coach and you're shooting only like, I need to hit success club five, you could hit success club five or six, or I guess you can't hit five anymore. You can only hit six now. You can hit success club six and you could earn less than someone who sells the same amount of volume of product, okay? So success club isn't the like, the point of the, this whole post in the round came in was like success club shouldn't be the measure of success anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a thread in our team page today because this really inspired me. I just read it this morning and I'm like, dude, this is like how I've been thinking, but I don't know how to like edge, like how do I say that to have people comment with how many people did you help this month? And that by that, I mean like how many people did you enroll with a free trial of BOD? How many people did you enroll with an Energize or Recover? Every single customer that you enroll with something, even if it's a free BOD membership, is going to count. Because I'm going to make our new life-changing club board thing based on how many people you helped, not how many successful points you got. And that's going to be our recognition for May. So I will start the thread, and I'll do a little video to show you in the Coach Online office how you can run a report to see who who you enrolled for the month if you don't know how to do that. And I'll, I'll do a little video on that. So does anyone have questions about that or anything they want to share? So thanks, Steph, because it's kind of like opened up the conversation to what I was already like. I'm trying to figure out like, how do we do this business? How do I help coaches earn? Like, not, I don't just want to be the only person earning money. I want my team to be earning money, right? And I want to be helping people. Like, that's the point of the business, not just about me. So. Well, something I've been, um, and I guess this is like me just talking out loud and maybe getting feedback on it. So like the way that I shared is how I run my groups currently. And what I'm thinking about doing is, and the, here's the thing, like, I think is cool about Beachbody. You can always reinvent yourself. You can always choose to change your guidelines. It's your business and you do not have to apologize for it. Even though sometimes I'm like, oh my God, what are people going to say? What are they going to do? But I've always shared like form checks into my general foot family. And to me, like that's, that's an added bonus. Most coaches don't do that. <laughs> I don't have to be doing that for anyone. It's something that I, I'm passionate about. So I'm thinking of just keeping that to my like select group and then opening up my general fit family to, to anyone. Like I'm still going to have my guidelines. You, if you're not going to like invest more in your health, you need to invest in your time with me. And I need to see five posts from you to stay in the group. Um, but opening it up to anyone like, great, you want a three month membership? Cool. But I'm not doing form checks posted in there for my like programs anymore that are private on YouTube. I mean, if somebody has a question, obviously I'm going to help them, but I'm not just going to blast all of my hard work to that group, it's going to be private to those investing more. Um, that's kind of my thought that I was thinking of doing, which is going to be different for the general fit family. They're used to having, well, you know what? No one's even asked for them in the last month. That's why I'm like, you know what? I might as well just do it because nobody's asking for it. So I might as well just make this my new like rule. I mean, I like everything that you're sharing. I'm, I'm just going to give you, like, I, you could totally do it that way, and I like the way you're saying it, but here's, here's, and here's playing a devil's advocate for you. You love doing form checks. That's, like, your passion, right? Like, if you weren't doing form checks, you'd probably hate Beachbody. I, no, I wouldn't hate Beachbody. I mean, I haven't always done form checks. I mean, you wouldn't, like, love it as much as you do. I, I love that I know people get better results when I break things down. Like I know that my form checks are helping the people that use them get better results, but people in the general fit family aren't as devoted to doing all things. Okay. I guess I can't, I can't like, I, I, what I understood about you is like, that's the part of it that you're so passionate about. It's what you love doing, like doing those form checks and like the fitness side of things. And that's also why you haven't invested more time into like the coaching, like developing coaches. Cause that's like what you love to do. Yeah. What it really is, is I feel that people take advantage of me. And so I want to, the people that I know are invested, I want to give my all to. The people that are kind of like half-assing, you know, you get my daily motivation. I'm checking in. I'm helping you. But I feel taken advantage of a lot of times with how much I want to give to people. And they just kind of write it off. And it's like, oh, 
yeah, whatever. I know she does a lot, but whatever. Like, so I, I don't want to feel taken advantage of anymore. And I do often feel that in my general fit family. Okay. All right. Then I, I, I guess I was just going to say, if it's like, if it's what you love doing and you love giving it to people, like, why would you want to limit the amount of people that get it? That, that would be my only thing like to think about. It's like food for thought. If like, it's, if that's your passion and that's what you love doing, like, why do you feel because they're not responding to it? Cause they're not commenting on your post. Cause they're not like doing like, they're not engaged in the group. I don't know like what you feel taken advantage of about, but it's like, if you love doing that, like, why are you, why do you care if people are like, you know, I don't know. I just, it's your passion. Like that's what you love to do. So what does it matter if there's people that are looking at it that aren't, like necessarily utilizing it. That's my only question to you is like, just a, like a general food for thought. Yeah. I, I guess. Yeah. I do feel taken advantage when people don't acknowledge anything. Um, and I mean, I've, I've had a lot of people have issues just even with my guidelines and it's like, I don't know, I go back and forth, but yeah, like when, you know, I put in all this hard work and nobody wants to even say like, thank you. Like, it's interesting. Like I'll do the same post in my program specific, and in my general, the general, it's like cricket sometimes and the program specific, they're so engaged because they really value what we're bringing. And that's where I'm coming from that in the general, I just feel like sometimes it's like, oh yeah, she's got something good to say, but okay, cool. Moving on. And it's like, I want to put more of my time where I know it's being appreciated and that appreciation comes back from comments and interaction and yeah. And people thanking me. That's it's like, damn, I don't need a lot, but it's like acknowledge what you're being given. Okay. So at least you know what you want to create. Yeah. So you just have to, so then it sounds like a good idea for you to have like it just be to the people that you are getting the feedback that you want to get from and then removing it unless somebody else has a suggestion for her. I mean, I, I, I actually just think of um, Stephanie, the go-giver, you know what I mean? I, I don't, I'm reading that book right now <laughs> and I'm actually listening to it right now. And, um, <clears throat> you know, if you're doing your form checks anyways for the program specific group, why not just let the other people and whoever wants it, wants it. I mean, I think people are so attracted to you because your form checks and I think you draw so many people. I mean, you drew me because of that because you showed up on your social, you're doing your form checks. I really was attracted to that. And even, I think you <clears throat> might have a lot of flies on the wall, but I think they're taking it in, but they might not be posting that they're taking it in. They might not be saying anything. I know I tend to do that. That is my personality type that I'll, I watched you for two years before I even, and I, I never commented on your stuff. I never said anything, but I, took your stuff to the gym with me and I did them at the end of my workout every day. And so just an encouragement to you, you decide what you got to do, but I'm just thinking, you know, if you're doing them anyways, why not? And then you never know who you'll get from your general populace that'll want to go into that private select group, or maybe you'll want to become a coach, you know, I don't know, just a thought. Well, something else that I'm definitely like, I do have people that reach out and say like, Hey, I'm doing this program. Can I have your form checks? Absolutely. So that's something else that I like had planned on doing like people that say like, Hey, I'm doing this program. Do you have form checks for it? Absolutely. I'll give it to you no matter what group you're in. Um, because that shows me like you want it and you're using them. So that was kind of my thought too. So it's not that I'm like, you can't have them unless you're in my select, but I want to know that you, you want them, you know, I want to know that you need them and you're using them. So if you want to ask me for them, and I have had people do that, like somebody just started a new program and she's like, Hey, do you have form checks for lift four? And I was like, absolutely. Gave them to her right away. So that's kind of like my middle ground where I feel like I'm still providing the value. I'm just not like spoon feeding it to you. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Melissa? No, that's great. I mean, it, is it more work though to contend with somebody personally than to just put it out there? Because to me, I, I would just for me personally, and I'm just throwing this out there, it would be more work for me to deal with people one-on-one -on -one than just to blast it to everyone. You know, it just seems like it would be easier for me, but you know, I guess it's just it's my personality. I do this across the board on things like gift giving, like tell me what you want. I don't want to just give you a gift that you're not going to use. I want to know that you want it. Tell me what, like, I'm kind of like this across the board. Like even when I give away stuff that I'm not even using anymore, I want to give it to someone that I know is going to use it. Not just to anyone like that's So it's like, and maybe that's a personal issue that I need to deal with. 
And when I'm open I to that, it. I will. <laughs> no. So it's not just this, like this is like a personality situation and you know, I'd have to dig deep to figure out where it's coming from. Um, but it's across the board with, I, I've grown up not feeling appreciated. I've grown up feeling overlooked. I've grown up feeling like my voice doesn't matter. And I know that's where it stems from. Um, I have a huge history of that. And this is where it's stemming from. Yeah. Like, and I, I know. totally get it. I can, I see where you're coming from, but I just want to let you know, your voice does matter. You're affecting a lot of people. Oh my God, girl, you got I mean, this. Are you kidding me? Deep rooted issue that I know is a deep rooted issue. So yeah, that's where it comes from. Can I tell you something? You're like a superstar in the social team builder page. <laughs> Everyone, I'm in a, um, I'm in a masterminds group and they're like, Oh my gosh, Stephanie Kathman is your coach. Oh my gosh. They're like, they freak out about it. They love you. <laughs> so, and, and, and since it's, it's being brought up and we're like having an honest conversation about it, I, I do think that it's something that what if, what if I'm just going to say like a, what if that was the only thing that was keeping you stuck from accomplishing all of your goals in the business, you having that feeling about being not appreciated and like wanting to like protect your gifts because people aren't responding to you. Cause I know that that's something you mentioned before about like, that's why you go live in social team builder all the time because people comment and people like what you say and people, but then you don't ever go live in like our team page because it gets like crickets or whatever. So maybe I'm just saying like a, what if you working through whatever deep thing that was, was the solution was like the way for you to get unstuck with building like the business in the massive way that I know that you're, it's possible that you could. What if? I, I don't know how to get unstuck. I mean, I've been honest with you about some things that are keeping me stuck. Um, I mean, I had a conversation with, and I, I'll say this to the group, because I think this was something really interesting to hear. Maria Howard, who is in our Fit Families, and she posts every day. She's amazing. We've become really close. Um, she's someone I confide in, and I was telling her, I have a block on my team. I do. I have a block with investing everything and wanting to get to know people because I've been burned so bad by people I have confided in, a former top coach that knew things about me that people don't know, turned on me on a dime, lied about me, told Marissa that she lied about me. I have deep rooted issues. And Maria was like, you know, it was really hard to get to know you as a coach. And she was like, but now that I'm not like a working coach, she's still a discount. She's like, like she tells me we're like BFFs on messenger. I, I do have a block. Um, and it's deep rooted and I don't know how to get past that. I do personal development. Um, but I, I can't seem to shift it because things keep happening that just bring about all of that baggage to the surface and make it worse. I mean, I just had something happen recently where I gave a new coach a lot of my time. Come to find, I do keto. That's why I'm not pushing products. Thanks for telling me after I gave you a lot of my time. I had another person who like listened to an hour call. We had a conversation privately on the phone, literally just stopped talking to me out of nowhere. Never, nothing bad ever happened and returned everything. Never giving me the respect to say why after I gave her a lot of my time. And it, it brings all that baggage to the top. And I, I do struggle with that. I struggle to want to have that investment because I've had a lot of bad situations happen. And it's like, I've been burned and my walls are up like no other. I acknowledge that. Um, and it's interesting because in the morning meltdown group, people like came at me for a post and one of my good friends who I've met through that group was like, man, if people would just get to know you, she's like, you've helped me so much. She's like, you're clearly getting judged. And she was like, I'm glad that I looked past that shit. Cause she's like, you've helped me immensely. I'm like, yeah, I, I want to help people, but I've been burned and I feel taken advantage of and my walls are up really fucking high and I don't know how to necessarily tear them down. Well, I'm going to let your teammates answer this because I've already given you my answer. Okay. Um, I think it's the nature of the business. First of all, um, you're just going to have, I listen to a lot of other like network marketing people and they're just like, you have to accept where people are at. 
Some people are going to really take the business and run with it. Some are just going to buy product and they're fine with that. You just have to run with the people who want to run. And number two, I think um, I had a gal that came on. I brought her on. She already had products, so I didn't even make her buy anything. Um, I served her. She private messaged me. I gave a lot of time for her. She ended up posting that she was doing Transform 20. She jumped on with another coach and left me, didn't even tell me. She's still in my group. She's still getting all my content. Um, I shared this with you, Marissa, on one of our first calls. I'm like, I don't even know what I did wrong. Message her a very kind message. And I said, you know what? If this is what you need, if this coach is going to help you, you know, bless and release. So what I had to do is I had to detach myself and not take it personal because this girl has been through three or four other coaches. And, and say to myself, move on and find your people. Find your close-knit people and run with the people who want, they're out there. There are trustworthy people out there, you know, that want to know you, that want to be close with you, that want to run with you. I'm one of them. I'm on your team. And I do feel that it's very hard to, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. But um, yeah, like we need to just band together, band together with the people you know, I, I know that I have a hard time selling sometimes, but I am in this for the long run. I am not going anywhere and I'm going to make this work and I will be a slow person, but as long as people can accept that I'm a slow mover, I'm going to be successful. I am. I'm making my way. And so as long as you lock arms with me, we can go together and you know, I'm not going to burn you. If I decide to leave, I'll tell you why. And you know what I mean? Like, you, if you're pouring into me, you're pouring into something that somebody that needs it. I'm just going to speak for my own personal thing, but just detaching and just allowing people and giving per people permission to be who they are and say, okay, they don't want me. I'm good. They don't want it. I'm going to go find people who want me. I don't know. That's just my thoughts. I, I, I think I agree. And you know that staff, you know that I've also been through the same thing you're going through. And now I'm on like the other side of it. And I'm focusing, I'm just focusing on the people that I still have in my team. And I'm, and I'm not letting like my hangups or my fears, like stop me from investing into people. Cause I've, I've been burned too. Like a bunch, you know, I was burned by the same coach. She like left, you know, her Stephanie's top coach, like didn't was like you know didn't want Stephanie anymore so she came to me so I invested all this time into her and then like a couple months later I was getting on one-on-one -on -one zooms with her and all of a sudden she was going to another company okay but you know what like Melissa said that's her it has nothing to do with me like and that is seriously if you can learn to make the choice it's a choice to keep feeling hurt about something that's already done it is a choice you can either choose to say, I'm going to let this go and I'm going to move forward. And I'm, I'm not going to think that because of this one person that everyone is like this because everyone is not like that. I'm going to know that that's her. It's her shit. It has nothing to do with me. It's not personal. I did nothing to create that with her. She is the one. And then try to come back and almost do a half-ass apology, probably trying to recruit me for her new company. <laughs> okay. But I don't care. I don't really give, that's her, that's her karma. It has everything to do with her, nothing to do with me. And I choose every day to not let that affect how I treat the people that I have on my team now and how I coach my people and how I approach new people because it's choice. That's really what it boils down to for me personally. That's all I can tell you. To not take it personally, to not make it you. It's not you. That's the point. You take it personally and you internalize and you make it like, what did I do? It's not, you didn't do anything. You just happened to step into a relationship with someone who was shady and didn't want to be honest with you, that's what you did. So now you can try to recognize those red flags and people moving forward before you get to that point. Or if it happens again, like whatever, you stepped into a relationship with someone who didn't honor and respect you. No problem. It happens. So it's like, don't take it personal. It's not you. It's nothing you did. Bless and release and just choose to not let that affect the way you treat people moving forward. I, Steph, sorry. Well, I was just gonna say, I know a hard part for me is in this business, sometimes we have to save face and you just have to like swallow your pride. And with that situation, I had to swallow my pride big time because 
you know, she, she took my name through the mud with multiple people. And I never said my, you know, I just had to stay silent because I kept telling myself the right people and the people who know me will know my intentions. And I think that's the hardest part for me with some of the stuff that I hold is that I didn't say my piece because I'm trying to stay face and be professional. Um, on the flip side, I mean, Marissa and I have had a very volatile relationship up and down and I've never left. And so part of me is like, what the hell? Like it no, is. We don't, we don't but, anymore, you guys. We don't anymore. Right. Yeah. So, but we, I mean, there's been times where like, she despised me, probably wanted to be like, God, go to another coach. I wanted to go to another coach, but I wanted the business more and we always stuck it out and we always come back. Even if like we came back and had another fight, broke up for a couple months, came back, <laughs> like, you know, but like, and so I'm like, a long time. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been on a good run now. And I think we're finally understanding boundaries and what, how to talk and how to communicate. But that's like where I'm always like, I do think that there's like a small piece of me that's like, if they really wanted it, they would still be here. Like, because I still wanted it and I'm still here almost five years later and I know these things and it's just, it's hard. Like, I know it. I hear you guys. I, I'm really working on myself. I've been doing like the most personal development I've been ever doing. Um, I'm moving forward in like other parts of my life, but this is a huge block that I, I think I want to get past. Maybe I don't, if I'm not working that hard on it. I don't know. I mean, I'm just. Talking. Well, I think Diana wants to say something, but I'm going to say one thing, just it takes more effort to be the bigger person and to not say your side of the story than it does to say your side of the story. So I commend that you're doing that because it is more challenging to be the bigger person and not say anything. So you're actually doing the more challenging role of that scenario by being the bigger person and just not saying your piece even as much as it's challenging just understand that you're better for it and i and i know that from personal development i recently had a challenger come at me and i kept quiet until i didn't and just stated my ground and i regretted it immediately and i actually posted about that on social media and it had a bunch of shares like i'm willing to admit my faults i was like i'm trying to be better i slipped up learning from it moving on What were you going to say, Diana? Thanks for the therapy session, you guys, first of all. <laughs> just, I would say, um, just as a new coach, it definitely has helped me when I've gone to, when I've like struggled with things. Um, you definitely have experience with different scenarios. And I know we have connected on a level with certain things that um, we've shared with each other. And that's definitely helped me knowing that, okay, if I'm on a low with, recruiting people and getting people on like different things that I can do um, on my own and then just reaching out and just being a team I think has definitely helped with me personally um, getting different viewpoints um, just kind of going back to the beginning of the conversation seeing the comparison with the challenge packs and the different products that is eye-opening to me um, and I'm definitely going to be taking that and running with it because sorry um taking that and running with it because i i guess i just always thought that i had to just do challenge packs or i feel like sometimes the training on beach body has always said like you need to just do that like or get as many people to come on and do that kind of stuff and it, I am definitely going to be going to my group that I have of girls and offering them like options. Like I know this one girl in my group, she loves like quest bars and stuff and she's been trying to get away from them, but I'm going to be like, Hey, here's an option for bars. Or, um, I know one of the girls struggles with nutrition and I've been working with her about it and I'm just going to be offering like the different products and seeing if other conversations sorry <laughs> other conversations um with individuals that want to sign up can go differently instead of because they usually question like the shakeology purchase or like what if i don't want to continue um i'm definitely going to be just doing maybe the bod package and then offering like side items milan that. has the 500 pv model um yeah. which 
she's like Melissa, Melissa, Marissa's upline. So we're part of her team. And that's, that's basically what Marissa's talking about. The, like the 500 PV model. I don't know if there's an easy way to share that. That's like dumbed down for, you know, cause like I get confused easily by a bunch of stuff and PV and blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's the whole model is like, you can make a crap ton and help a lot of people with just products here and there, like what Marissa has been sharing. I guess I, 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 I did see that and then it's starting to go in that direction. And then I got like sidetracked again with like success club and stuff. So I, I didn't really teach that. But then when I saw this whole thread, I'm like, wow, they have a coach. Like one of them commented with, I have a coach who didn't earn one success club point, but had a thousand team volume. And so she earned more than like someone who earned like success club six or 10 or whatever because of her volume. And she, and she, and so what the, the upline coach did, who's like a crazy, like super successful, like million club member, she had, she like looked in her online office and saw the people that had volume and she personally messaged them and said, you know, wow, awesome job. You contributed this much volume to the team. Um, like you're doing amazing, like a good, like congratulations, recognition, like a personal message. And the person wrote her back and was like, Oh my gosh, wow. Thank you so much. Like, I felt like I wasn't doing anything because I didn't hit success club. Like, I felt like I wasn't like I was a bad coach. And so I think, I think I wanted to go in that direction, but I got pulled back into the old like thinking of what I'm, it's not my fault. It's also not really, I mean, I'm, yes, I take responsibility, but also it's like, this is the way Beachbody like molded us. And this is the old formula that that I learned on success club, success club. That's what I built my, my six figure business on. So it's hard for me to like get my brain out of that. But like when I saw all these posts, I'm like, I need to teach people this. Like I need to learn how to like, I need to shift my mindset. I need to shift my brain and I need to download this information and I need to give it to my coaches because my team, because it's not working the way it did work before. Like the way I built the six figures with the success club isn't working for people the way it was. So I do, just so you know, I do, when I have a conversation with someone, listen to them and I don't just shove them into the challenge pack option. I will usually have a challenge pack option. Like if, if it's, whether it's a completion pack or it's a bot or whatever, and usually I'll shoot, sorry, I muted myself. Um, I'll go and I'll work my way backwards. So say there's someone that they want to have energy for their workouts. They want, they, they, they get sore easily, or they're just starting to work out. So the, you know, the performance stack is something that I use. So I'll often recommend it. Shakeology is amazing for everyone. Not everyone's going to see the value in it. I'll usually start with like, okay, so here's the workouts. Here's the nutritionals I recommend for you. And if I recommend a specific nutritional program, like to be mindset or ultimate portion fix, I will start with the biggest package I think will be fitting for their needs. And then I will ask them, what of those do you think is a good fit for you? So I do, when I have those conversations with people, ask that. And when they say, I don't really want the workouts or I want the workouts in the pre-workout or I want the workouts in this, I will, and I'll say, I'll break your package down and create it any way you want. So maybe it's only that they want the bars. Maybe it's only that they want the workouts. It's whatever they think is the best fit for them. So I will give them my recommendations, but then I let them pedal into what it is that they want. And so I create their package however they want. Okay. So I do that when I talk to people, I get, I think I haven't done a good job of teaching that to you guys. So I'm going to try to focus on that more. Um, and I do want to tell you that a lot of people I'll even backpedal into just doing a 14 day free trial of Bob. Because if I can get them to try something and actually engage in that BOD membership and get into our product catalog with a free membership and actually use it and like it, of course I support them, you know, with texting or whatever through that process. It's getting them in, you know, the entry level and then, and then they can be exposed to our community and how we support and eventually become a lifelong customer. Sabrina, I mean, freaking Sabrina <laughs> right there. She can tell you, um, she can tell you that's how she came in. So wait, but before Sabrina talks, I want a hand raise of people that came in to the business or wait, not even like as a coach or, or a customer on our team, but someone who purchased a Beachbody product first, even if it was not with a coach, like on your own, like you had purchased insanity 10 years ago, 
before they actually bought a challenge pack? Who of you did? Because I did. Who didn't enroll with a challenge pack initially? Stephanie, you didn't. You didn't get Shakeology, dude. <laughs> so, of all eight, raise your hands. Again, everybody raise your hands. Christine, you too. Wendy, no? Okay, all right. So, out of, that's more than half of us, just so you know. One, two, three, four of us out of seven did not enroll initially with the challenge pack. So, I just wanted to show you. I didn't, I bought Insanity first, okay? Even me, <laughs> six figure earner. So that's my point of this. I hope it's getting across and now Sabrina can share. Yeah, so, <laughs> hey guys. Um, yeah, when I, so I actually, it was a, two years ago last month that um, I started talking to Marissa and I was introduced to her through a seven day ab challenge she was doing by a friend of mine who was going to do it. And I didn't, I actually kind of, I, I blew it off because I couldn't send my before pictures. And then we talked again about another challenge and it was kind of the same thing. Like my before pictures grossed me out so bad and made me so set, like I cried just after taking them that I just, I couldn't send them. I couldn't do it. And then I finally got to the point where I was like, okay, I've got to do something. So Marissa and I got on the phone and had a conversation and I didn't think I could do home workouts. I didn't think that, you know, I had tried, I don't know how many other like protein shakes and, you know, uh, nutritional shakes and all of that other stuff. And they were all gross. I didn't like them. So I didn't think that I could do the Shakeology. Um, and I wasn't sure about, you know, the whole like check-in or being able to do any of that part of it because I had had a gym membership for two years that I didn't use. And the only time I went was when I had an appointment with my personal trainer. And that was it. That was the only time because that was at the point where I was accountable. So we talked, we had a wonderful conversation, we connected and I said, okay, I'll give it a try. I started with a 14 day free trial and a uh, Shakeology sampler pack. Um, after I got my sampler pack, I think I had had two shakes and I was hooked. Like they were so good, it was so easy, it was, so I, I didn't even do a actual Beachbody workout for the first, it, what, what was it, 14 days for the free trial. I think it was like the last, two or three days of my free trial that Marissa said, let's do a group workout. And I did in the garage live with Marissa and a couple of our other teammates and that, yep, on Zoom. And it was, it was amazing. And so then that's when I purchased my challenge pack because I knew I wanted the Shakeology. I knew I wanted the beach, the on demand for a year. I knew that that was something that I wanted. And then later on, when, you know, after I would, had been in it for a while, then I started using the performance line. So, but it wasn't right away. Um, you know, I, it took me a little while. I think it was actually 80 day obsession that got me into the performance line. And now like, I love it. So it's not, you know, Marissa talks about this a lot. It's meeting people where they're at. Um, I even have, I have some challengers that, ha that I've done that with, like, okay, you don't want the workout. That's fine. If you want to, you know, they want to try the, the Shakeology. My best friend finally ordered a sampler pack and she had done, she had purchased T25 previously and she loved it, but she can't find, couldn't find all of her DVDs. I said, well, you know, you could do the on demand and you could have it without having to worry about finding a DVD. You can scream it. So after doing the Shakeology, she went ahead and got a challenge pack. She signed up as a discount coach because she's also um, her stepdad is doing half a scoop of Shakeology a day. Um, and then he actually decided he wanted to try the candy bars, the beach bars. And so they ordered those, you know, so it's meeting people where they're at. And he thinks that those are just amazing. He's like, these are too good to be good for you. Um, but that's the thing. And I have a couple of other people that it's the same thing. And it's meeting people where they're at because if she had pushed me, when we talked on the phone to, you have to ha get a challenge pack. You have to try the Shakeology. You have to have the home workouts. You have to have this. I wouldn't have done it. 
I would have backed away. I would have walked away because I would have felt like that's not where I'm at. And that wasn't where I was at right then. Now, two weeks later, I was there. But it was after experiencing the accountability. It was after experiencing the, the, the team and the group and the community that we have to offer. And, you know, here I am. Uh, the end of this month will be my two-year anniversary. And I love it. And I'm down 40 plus pounds. Um, I still have, still working on trying to get rid of the last 20 that I want to get rid of. But I'm down 40 plus pounds. I'm down 45 plus inches and loving myself and working more on me personally. I started doing personal development this year because for the last year and a half, I thought, oh, I don't need that. I don't need that. Um, I started doing personal development now and I love it. Like it has helped me find more about myself than I could have ever imagined. And if it wasn't for this team, if it wasn't for the community, if it wasn't for the support, I would not, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. And I don't know that I could do this without what we have here. So it's, it's meeting, it's for me, it's trying to get people to understand that that's where we are at and that that's what we offer. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> I think that. Hey, I just wanted to mention that I feel like this is going to be like a total game changer for me because I was under the impression or just my thoughts were the challenge packs too. I did had no idea that we can do, and I'm still not clear. I guess I have some um, homework to do how to offer where the, the free bod comes in. I don't know anything about that. So I'm gonna have to figure that out, but I've always just been like trying to push the challenge packs. I never really thought about just, you know, the nutrition or whatever. So I think I need to go back and start rehabbing some conversations. <laughs> Wendy, real quick, because that's the easy answer. The free two week trial comes with a three month membership. So people have to put in a credit card, but they get the first two weeks free and then their credit card is charged. Now, if you do that option and somebody after the two weeks is like, oh my gosh, I want to go all in, they would have to cancel the three month and then enroll with something different. So it rolls over to a three month, and if they wanted a challenge pack, you do have to call in and cancel, and then reorder. All right, so I think this was really, we didn't go over the- and I will say this call has- What? I was just going to say, this call has me like rethinking things. I actually have somebody who just started the one that I said, she was like, well, I'm stubborn. I'm like, so am I. Um, but she has been doing really good. So I might extend an invite into the fit family um, today because she has been consistent on her own and to me like proven that she wants it. So I might invite her, even though it's like a three month membership. Well, I, I don't think that I'm not going to make your process wrong because here's, here's what I'm going to share. And this will be because I got to hop on another call that I have with the Scipio, which I know I haven't talked a lot about Scipio, but it's an automated texting service where you can get a business phone. I, I talked to some of you guys about it. With that, I think that when you're, when you're initially starting with someone, the personal one-on-one -on -one relationship is the most important thing. Some people can get in the group and get lost. So you establishing that relationship with them personally, with Sabrina, I did that. That's why she's here right now. It wasn't just the group support. Yes, that did create accountability for her, but it was the relationship that we built. And that is what this whole business is built on. Oh, here's Katie. She's hopping on the Zoom. I'm, I'm getting on with Katie. She's a, the assistant of another coach that's doing Scipio with us. So we're going to go over how to like get new coaches started, like the campaign for that. So my point is, like the, what, I, what I like about your process, Stephanie, is that 
with Scipio because it's, you know, it's going to be something that you might be able to purchase as an entry level coach at like, maybe we don't know what the numbers are yet, but they want to go present to Beachbody corporate and it potentially be something that get pick, gets picked up by Beachbody. And we've been beta testing it for the last several months. So they're thinking, they were asking us like, what price point do we think for packages for newer coaches? And we said, you got to start something really low for new coaches because they're not going to want to invest a lot of money into this. But what's really cool about Scipio is you could actually schedule out your tech messages to people so what's cool about that is it's you it's you talking it's your content but you chatting with that three-month membership you could schedule out your three months worth of text to that person and then you're having that and then they're responding and you're having a conversation with them and you're building that relationship but you don't have to remember to text them every time so what's really awesome about that is that you can build that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with more people and then when that relationship is super built, then they're not going to go in the group and get lost because you've already established that relationship with them. What I've found for me is like, if I haven't established that relationship with someone and they're just going in the group, I don't know. I lose them. I really do. I lose a lot of people that way. So I just want you guys to have food for thought that like, I'm not making Stephanie your way of doing it wrong because I think that what you're doing is you are establishing that one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with them, which is leading to them wanting to go into the bigger package in your fit fam. So, you know, it might be a small tweak in whatever process you're doing, but it's that, it's that personal touch that's ultimately going to create a lifelong, like a lifer, like Sabrina. Now she's here, you know, for two years, she's lost 40 pounds and 43, whatever plus inches. She would not have been here if I had tried to push her to buy a challenge pack in the beginning. And I knew that and I felt that. So it's like you feeling and meeting your people where they are and having that honest conversation and recommending things. Like I have, now, like because of Scipio, I'm in conversation with a couple people that were just my free leads from Beachbody. I have never been able to get a hold of my free leads through email. And because I'm texting them, they're actually responding. And I have two people that are enrolling for a free BOD trial. Now, they don't know me from anything. They just got assigned to me as a coach. If I tried to put, push a challenge back purchase, they'd be gone. They'd be going in the other direction. But because I'm talking about, you know, you can start for free and I'll support you. I'm establishing that relationship with them from the get because it's about the relationship and not the products. Okay. So I hope that that was clear and you took away some good stuff. We can continue this conversation. I would like for you guys going into this week to start researching in the FAQs and in Beachbody's links and finding out what products you personally will be endorsing and you know, inviting people to look at how much volume they are compared to challenge packs. So you can start seeing the difference. So, you know, and how, what ways we can all leverage that and keep and retain people longer. Cause it's not just, this doesn't just come from me. This is going to be a group, like a team effort of how we can, for me, the biggest questions are how can a brand new coach, what does the conversation look like between a brand new coach and a prospect? that gets them to enroll with whatever it is that they need, the prospect, not the coach. What does that conversation look like? What questions do you ask? What's your system? Once they get in, how do you support them and recognize their efforts and build that relationship to retain them as a customer? I think if you can answer those two key things, like what does that conversation look like to get them enrolled? And then how do you retain them long-term? That is the business right there. So, if you guys, you know, go through your week, look at those things. If you want to do live videos in the team page and share about them, um, whatever you're learning, we'd love to hear from you and you can post and you know, it's, it's a team, it's a group effort. So those are just some things to consider. And thank you so much, everyone who shared <laughs> and you're welcome for the therapy session, Stephanie. <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad Melissa was on and Diana and that they all kind of, and that they, you know, responded to you. So you got to hear from your personal coaches and hopefully that will help you, you know, become unstuck. All right, you guys feel free to, to write questions in the team page or whatever in relation to this. And I'll get the call posted ASAP. All right. Bye guys. Thanks for being on. See ya. Hey, I was like, that's so funny. I was like, oh, let me end my recording.